verse 1. But the Bible says that they took him by craft. Now the word craft here, dolos, uh, was a word referred to trick. They were trying to trick or create a plot that they could take Jesus and have him executed. They were trying to come up with a way that because they didn't have no evidence, they were trying to make up some evidence that Jesus could be taken, given to the Romans and killed for nothing that he had done. But why were they so angry at Jesus? Why, uh, Belito, were they so mad? He was the Messiah. How, Paula, can you be mad at the Messiah? Well, Jesus had came and upset them and exposed them and showed that they were hypocrites. Jesus had, had claimed, these guys had claimed to be spiritual. They had claimed to be godly men. And Jesus showed that these men were nothing but a bunch of religious phonies. Brothers and sisters, Jesus made a fool out of them right in front of the common people and they couldn't stand it. Ah, you see, they were also angry because Jesus hurt their business. Oh, you got to see this. Go back to, to Mark chapter 11. Get verse 15. Let me show you what Jesus did. He heard it. He heard that business. Help me a little on the floors, big guy. Watch this. The Bible says what? And they came to Jerusalem. Now, Jesus came into the temple. Watch this, man. They come to Jerusalem. Jesus get in here, Jamal, and he see what they're doing. In the Lord's house. Help him right here. Uh, he see what they're doing in the Lord's house. So Jesus come over, turning over tables and, and running them out of the house. The Bible says what? He overthrew the tables of the money changer. And, and the seats of them that sold dove. Read. And would not suffer that any man should carry in any vessel through the temple. They were mad at Jesus because Jesus disturbed their business. Amen. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Beloveds, I want you to know that, 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 that anybody that sold anything in the temple went through the Sanhedrin. If, if you had a boot in the temple, you had to get the authority from the Sanhedrin. And here's what they did. They would take the money and they would mark it up three or four times. They were cheating people. They would take, they would take sacrifices, mama, and, and, and sell a sacrifice that was supposed to sold for $20. They would sell it for $60. And Jesus saw that they were making their father, his father's house, a place of dens, a place of thieves, and he was angry. Amen. You know what? We ought to get angry Amen. when they start messing over the Lord's house. But you got to see this. While this passage reveals human nature at its worst, it also reveals human nature at its best. Jesus now contrasts the hatred of his enemy against the unconditional love of a woman who had some extravagant love. My brothers and sisters, this verse paints a portrait of a woman that I want you to see because I want you to, to see with me that the kind of love she had for Jesus. And I want you to see that every redeemed, born again believer ought to have the same kind of love. I want to point out some stuff. I want to point out some facts in this text about her love. And then I want you to be honest with yourself, Elizabeth, and I want you to examine your love and see if you really... Oh, we can sing that song. That's one of our better songs, I Really Love the Lord. But do we really mean it when we sing it? I want you to know that this text can convict you if you've got any kind of heart whatsoever. Watch the text. Go to verse 3. Look at verse 3. The Bible says, And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leopard, as he sat at meat, there came to him a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, of spike none, very precious. And, and she broke the box and she poured it on his head. The text unfolds in a little town called Bethany.
located on the southern slopes of the Mount of Olives, just a few miles west of Jerusalem. Now, Bethany was a very special place to Jesus, for Lazarus lived there, and, and Mary and Martha lived. As a matter of fact, Jesus actually raised Lazarus from the dead here in this small town of Bethany. But we see something a little different here because we are told that that, that was, a, that was a, a man by the name of Simon the Leopard. Now Jesus had healed this man of his leprosy and Simon wanted to honor God, uh, honor Jesus by having a feast in his home. Now I want you to watch this. This man had had, had leprosy and, and Jesus healed him and he was overwhelmed with joy. Oh, how I wish that we could be more thankful for what Jesus has done. Uh, Y'all not feeling me. Oh, how I wish, Felita, that every now and then you can look back over your life and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I, I wish we could look back and say, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to go to school. I wish we could look back and say, Lord, thank you for this marriage. Uh, thank you for these children. Uh, thank you for this job. Uh, I wish every now and then we would just look back and thank God for what he's done because we walk around here like everything we do or and are doing we're doing it because of who we every now and then you ought to just pause and say Lord I want to thank you just thank you I, I just want to Thank you, but watch the text, man, because go to John chapter 12. Uh, keep your finger on the text. We're coming back here, but I want you to see it from John's perspective because here in John chapter 12, in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. Now, John described Lazarus as being one of the guests in Simon the leper's house. Y'all got to get this. If you don't get this, you're going to miss me down the road. John described Jesus as one of the guests in Simon the leper's house. Now, I, I didn't bring the photo, but, I, but I've, always, I've always told you this, that in Bible times, their table was much different from ours. Their table was high on one end, and it went down. It floated down, and, and you would sit at the table on your elbow with your legs extended out. We was, I told the 7.30 crowd this morning that we were at a wedding on yesterday and, and while we were there, they, the, they bought a, 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 a dinner and, and my wife was hunching me, talking about, that's not the salad folk. She said, you need to use that other one. I said, I don't care nothing about no, no fork, you know, it's, if it's gonna pick up the salad. <laughs> That's all I wanted to do. But she said, baby, that's, that's not. But in Bible times, I want you to know something. They didn't use forks and knives. They, they would sit around and they would use their hands. They would literally put their hands in their food while they would be extended from the table and, and, and eat while they were sitting at the table. Jesus now was sitting there. And there was a woman by the name of Mary. Oh, I want to talk about Mary. I don't want you to confuse this Mary, the one we preached about a few months ago, because that Mary in, in, in Luke chapter 7 was a different Mary. As a matter of fact, the Bible talks about about eight different Marys. But I want you to know that this Mary, this Mary was there at the table. We don't know all who was, who was on the guest list. We do know that, that Jesus was there. We know that the 12 was there. We know Mary and Martha was there. We know Lazarus was there. And we know it was in the house, and this is important, it was in the house of Simon the leper. And as they were sitting meat, eating meat, Mary got up from the table. She went and got a box, an alabaster box, and she bought the box in. And she began to pour it because Jesus was at the table with his feet coming out. She began to pour it on his head and pour it over his body. But we are told that this, this ointment is a very special ointment. It's very special. Now, as a matter of fact, it, it was a box 
that came in a flash. It was a red tinted ointment that only came out of plants found in India. It was a perfume that, that they would take and cover your body when you would die. It would allow the stink to stay away from the body. Now watch this now. This girl had, had this box and it was very expensive. Poor people did not have this kind of ointment. Now, since Jesus was reclined at the table, Mary began to pour it over Jesus. As a matter of fact, Mary was more like David in 2 Samuel 24, verse 24, when David says, I don't want to offer the Lord nothing that don't cost me. Ah, boy, it's rough right here. He says, I don't want my gift. I don't want to give the Lord nothing that don't cost me. Beloved, what have your gift to the Lord cost you? Jesus says, if any man is to come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me.